Hi guys, my name's Craig. Welcome to Small Farmer Life. Well, it's a beautiful day. I'm just taking my dog out for a walk. He's a bit deaf and I don't want him to walk off because he can't hear me call his name. But what a beautiful sky. The sun is right in my eyes, so I've got the old work shades on. But, guys, if you haven't been to the channel before, I'm glad to see you're here. And if you're interested in small farming, Think they're starting a small farm, maybe you want to buy some agricultural land and start that small farm and eventually live on that small farm. Think about hitting that subscribe button because I cover that topic a lot on this channel. How to get small farmers started and living on the actual agricultural land to purchase. And that's what we're going to talk about. How to value an acre of agricultural land. Because if you're like me and lots of other people, if you're looking to purchase agricultural land the first thing you'll probably do is go on to google and type in land for sale in a certain area and you'll see lots of different prices you might see a three acre field going for a lot less than a one acre field and there's reasons for that or you'll see lots of larger parcels of land up for sale and not many smaller parcels of land and if they are smaller parcels of land for sale, then they're a lot more expensive when you calculate the actual cost of a 100 acre field, which might cost £600,000, so an acre of land would be £6,000. And then you look at a two acre field and you think, why is that £40,000? Well, it's like anything in life, the more you buy, the cheaper you're going to get it, and you're going to get a discount. But it doesn't matter where you're in the UK, farmland, if it's actually farmed properly by a farmer, it won't change much wherever you are in the country. Smaller parcels of land will. And larger parcels of land normally get bought up by neighbouring farmers or people who want to invest in land, especially while the basic payment scheme was about, and it's still about, they're going to get rid of it by 2027, but that land would give them a return and they could still rent it out to farmers, that sort of thing. So that's who purchased large parcels of land and the farmers could get farmers mortgages on those pieces of land where you couldn't get a mortgage on a large parcel of land like that. When it comes to smaller parcels of land, the reason they're so expensive is more people have enough money to purchase one, two, three, four acre plots than they do to purchase a 100 acre plot. And then you've got to factor in where the land is located. So if it's located just on the edge of London, it might be one acre. Someone might pay 40,000 pounds for that acre. It could be that somebody who lives right next door to the land wants to purchase that land. Then the seller could ask that homeowner for 50,000 pounds for one acre because it's adjoining their property and it's going to increase the value of their property. And there's other reasons that can affect the value of land. Does it have water and electricity on there? So if it's got utilities on there, like land value will more or less double. Well, it'll at least go up by a third or half. And then, is it near an industrial estate? Because if it's near an industrial estate, it'll probably be cheaper because it might be contaminated. Or it could be more expensive because the industrial estate could be expanding. And it could be a potential building plot for a big warehouse or something like that. Maybe an Amazon FBA centre or something like that. Or is it next to a development boundary of a town? Because if it's next to a development boundary of a town, People who buy up those pieces of land are uh, investors who think they might eventually get developed. Well, they'll probably look at how fast the town's grown. And if it's grown really fast like ours is, then it's a safe bet that if they buy up the agricultural land right on the edge of the boundary, that when they do come to extend the boundary, then the pieces of land that they've purchased will increase in value drastically. And if you're going to find some agricultural land inside the development boundary of a town, then you're talking in the millions, because if you can find two, three acres inside the development boundary of a town, you're going to be paying a couple of million for it, because you can get 30 houses or so 
on those acres of land. So depending on where it is in the country, imagine trying to buy an acre of land inside the development boundary just outside of London. You'd probably be talking 10 million quid or something like that. But what I would say, the price of an acre of land you should be paying in this day and age, forget all the other factors that I've mentioned, forget that it's got water on it, forget that it's near a boundary, it shouldn't have potential for development, it shouldn't have buildings on it, nothing like that. We're just talking about bare agricultural land and it shouldn't change wherever you are in the country. But you need to be looking around about five miles outside of a town or further. Maybe there might be a couple of farms around it and a couple of farm workers' dwellings, that sort of thing. So you know there's electricity and water in the area somewhere. But if you're looking in them areas, you'll look to pay around about 12 and a half to 15,000 pound per acre. Now, if one or two acre plots come up, you might pay a little bit more, like 40,000 pounds for two acres. Because people who look to buy those size parcels of land are people who have horses and that sort of thing. And if you've got horses, it's already an expensive hobby. So they might have savings. And if they're paying high livery fees, Again, depending on where they are in the country, they might purchase that piece of land and put their own stables on it. Just like I've got six stables on my land. But forget about all of that. We're just talking about bare agricultural land outside of a town, a good distance away where there's no chance of getting development for the council estate. But you, starting a small farm, can get probably the right to live on that land if you get the farm up and running and you actually start a small farm and business, that sort of thing, you should look to be paying 12 and a half to 15,000 pound per acre. If you buy 10 acres, you might get it for around about 100,000 pounds. And if you've got a lot of money, well, like I said, if you buy 100 acres or something like that, you'll get it for 6,000 pounds an acre. But for that type of money, you're not going to get anything with buildings on it. You're not going to get anything special. You're not going to get land that overlooks a big lake or something like that. You're just going to get agricultural land. It's got decent drainage because you're going to check that out. You're not going to go out like after the two weeks we've just had where it's been nice and sunny and the land is going to be dry as a bone. You're going to go out after you've had a few days of rain and check that land is well drained after a couple of days of bad weather if not it's just a little bit soft underfoot but yes guys that's about the average price of an acre of land fair piece of agricultural land is 12 and a half to 15,000 pounds now if you like the video guys hit the like button like i said if you're thinking about starting a small farm you want to live on that small farm maybe you want to retire on that small farm and buy a fair piece of agricultural land and start your small farm from scratch hit that subscribe button if you want to be notified of more upcoming farming videos, guys, then hit the bell button. Until next time, guys, my name's Craig. You've been watching The Small Farmer Life. Make sure you take care of yourself. And most of all, take care of the family. Bye for now. See ya.